Welcome to Minds of Mountain Film. My name is Ben Skinner. I'm here with John Dow, the, uh, the, uh, a star of the 2006 documentary, uh, uh, God Grew Tired of Us, and uh, somebody who has uh, done a great deal of work for Southern Sudan through the John Dow Foundation. John, welcome to Minds of Mountain Film. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to start out just by opening it up and, and asking, what does the foundation do? How did you get involved with it? What's, what's the mission? Well, the foundation that you're talking about is called John Dow Foundation. Uh, I got involved in humanitarian work, non-profit organization work, uh, in 2004, right when I came from Africa to the United States, uh, having uh, got all the support that I've been getting from Syracuse, New York, Central New York, and Skinny Alice and others, uh, you know, that I, I felt like I was, uh, you know, of course, blessed to be able to get to enjoy all the opportunities the United States has to offer. Mm. Uh, for example, going to school, be able to find a job, uh, make friends. And, and so, so I thought, and, you know, this is great, so what do I do in my life? I, I must give something back. And that's why I start forming non-profit organization. The first one was uh, the Lost Boy Foundation of New York. The second one was American Care for Sudan Foundation. The third one, the J John Dow Foundation. And the mm -hmm. fourth one is known as South Sudan Institute. Now, which I'm now running the last two, the John mm -hmm. Dow Foundation, and which is running the medical clinic that we built in 2006, uh, supporting it and running it. And then the South Sudan Institute, which is, has three components, has agriculture, peace and reconciliation, and education. So, so I end up running two, and then I let the other two go. Mm -hmm. And what the John Dow Foundation do, uh, as I said before, we build this medical clinic in a place that, ha that has never been a medical facility before, mm. uh, since the creation. Mm. So this clinic, uh, that we built in 2006 have helped so many people in South Sudan. Mm -hmm. I would say South Sudan, of course, it is built in Duke County, Jongle State, but mm -hmm. still helping people in South Sudan mm -hmm. in many ways, mm -hmm. treating diseases such as malaria, pneumonia, tuberculosis, all the other diseases, and they also help mothers who are giving birth mm -hmm. uh, and maternity services. And all of the above, and of course, uh, last uh, last year, uh, last two years, we were bringing doctors, the medical doctors that had, uh, you know, were you know, generously accept to come to South Sudan to my village, mm. to open people's eyes, those who are blind. Mm. So, the John Dow Foundation is doing that with the, uh, you know, talking, getting other people to support us, be part of the John Dow Foundation. So that medical clinic has uh, has helped so many people. Last. In last months, we have passed a number of people that patients that have been coming to the clinics about 100,000 mm. of people, over 7,000 children vaccinated at the clinic, over 4,000 mothers who gave birth to the medical clinic for the first time. So this medical clinic is doing a lot, it's even including uh, nutrition, uh, uh, those who are malnourished, especially elderly and mm. children. Uh, they come there, we admit them and then we feed them, and then they gain weight and then go home. So this medical clinic is what I always said, is, is the great heart of America. Mm. It show how best, how great is the United States because of being supported by Americans. And on that point, before we step back and talk about um, your origins and, where, and how you came to America and what, what life was like for you in Jonglei before, before you came, um, I wonder if you could uh, just say how, if people want to get involved with the John Dow Foundation, what's the best way to do it? Uh, always the best way you could do it for those who would be able to want to help us. Mm. You could go to website www.johndowfoundation.org mm. or if you want to also help with peace, you could also go to the South Sudan Institute mm. org, or if you want to help, help you know, to help with others. Uh, such as the other doctors, the eye doctors that are helping. So you, you, you can go to uh, um, John Moran Eye Center. Mm. So all of this, you can either Google our name or maybe I'm going to give you a card so that you can have the exactly uh, uh, you know, website uh, for those who would definitely want to learn more about it or want to support us. Why Very not? Good. Very good. Um, so stepping back, um, of course, the Second Sudanese Civil War was 
um, uh, uh, complex origins um, going back uh, in, in essence centuries, uh, arguably to the, to the middle of the 19th century. We could spend um, three years talking solidly about the origins of this war, um, but talk to me about your experience within that war and, and, and how you wound up coming to the United States. For those that haven't seen the film, yeah, it, what's, what, was, what was your experience and, and how did you wind up coming through Kakuma? Well, for those who have not watched, had never had the opportunity to watch God Grew Tired of Us or watch the, the movie that we are showing, we showed yesterday and mm. we're showing tonight, known as Duke County. Mm. For those who have not had opportunity to see those movies or read my books or my two books, God Grew Tired of Us and The Lost Boy, Lost Girl, mm. or other uh, book written by other lost boys. For those who have not gotten that information, what happened, uh, you know, in, in Sudan is before it split into two. Sudan is a country known for uh, uh, internal fighting. Mm. Uh, the north against south, the north of which majority of them, about 98 percent, called themselves Arab. Mm. They, they identify themselves with Arab and of course Muslim. Mm. Whereas the South, where I come from, we identify ourselves as African mm. and Christians. Mm. So this has been fighting between these two groups. The North always control the government, control the, the power, control mm. everything, control the resources. And you can see they use country resources to destroy the half of the country, I mean mm. the South. Mm. To, for example, 1983, war started between North and South and didn't get to my village until, until uh, 1987 when I was 12 years old. Mm. This is exactly when many villages in South Sudan were raided, burned down, or, you know, killed people and so mm. on. And so many young boys, including myself, you know, we were separated from families. Mm. And then we wind up becoming uh, refugees in, in, in Kenya, I mean in uh, Ethiopia first, and then later in Kenya. Mm. So it was a very, very tough, uh, situation, mm. especially when we left our villages being chased down, shot at, bombed, whatever it is. It's the situation t at that time was very tough. Mm. Not only that you are worried about whether you're going to survive or not, but also, I mean, killings and shooting, but also things like starvation, mm. thirst, uh, wild animal attacks. It, it just be became very, very difficult. And some of us lost their life through those, whether attacked by wild animals, killed by fellow human being, mm. missionaries sent from the north to destroy southerners, mm. or died of hunger, yeah. starvation, mm. uh, uh, thirst. Uh, and, and, and I can biblically still remember uh, at that time, within my village to Ethiopia, it was very tough. Mm. There was nothing to eat. The, you, know, you, she, you, know, uh, you only live on wild fruits. Um, drinking human urine mm. or eating mud or chewing, chewing grass like a cow mm. uh, because of that that uh, there's nothing you can do you, you got to eat what you can find so that you can stay alive that's yeah. those who did not you know you know didn't have and help those some of the lost mm. boys to survive now, b before you get to the story of the Lost Boys, because it's a fascinating one and it's one that everybody should know and think about as we, as we think about um, the effects of war on children in particular. Um, but uh, talk to me briefly about the, the United Nations, in theory, um, was supposed to be providing, through the World Food Program, through the World Health Organization, aid to those in, in gravest need around the world. The United Nations did not intervene and they did not come to those areas that the, the government of northern Sudan, of the government of Sudan at the time, um, said don't go to. Um, it's been argued that therefore the United Nations, by virtue of that neutrality, by virtue of respecting the sovereign government, which was Khartoum at the time, was complicit with genocide. Um, do, you, do, you, do you have an opinion on that? Well, uh, and, and many times I... Uh I can criticize the United Nations, and I also sometimes can appreciate what they have done. First of all, uh, United Nations is good. They helped many people. Mm -hmm. They gave me education. Mm -hmm. uh, without the United Nations, I would have never been to school. This is good. Mm -hmm. They helped me also with the other guys, uh, other fellow you know, refugees, and they provide foods and clothes and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would not want to 
not say that because mm -hmm. they have done a good job mm -hmm. of that, that, mm -hmm. that situation. However, the United Nations must, in my own opinion, mm -hmm. must revise mm -hmm. what are their policies. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and sometimes I don't even get them what they really are doing. Mm -hmm. For example, they allowed criminals that called themselves governments or leaders or whatever it is to destroy others. Mm. So then I said, so wh how, what was, what, what was the message allowed all the nation to form United Nations? Mm. If they cannot protect the life of simple, vulnerable people like mm. us, for example. The United Nations was aware that we were there. Mm. And even they brought some food. Mm. But can a human being live on only food? Mm. Mm. No. Food alone cannot help you. Yeah. You can eat today and then kill tomorrow, right? Yeah. You'll be destroyed tomorrow and, and, and so on. Yeah. So why are they so good in providing food and mm. they're not so good in protecting life? And that is what has been going on. And, mm. and what makes me really sad sometimes is that there are some clips that come out right now about mm. us. Mm. There were some journalists went to refugee camp, mm. for example, in Ethiopia, mm. and the United Nations was aware. Mm. So I said, so what was your work? Mm. We were children, mm. okay? Yeah. Maybe if, I'm not asking the United Nations to get in, in vain in places where like adults and killing adults or something like that, mm. which of course they should do that. But we were children. Even this, they describe our camp as a camp, as, as a city of children. Mm. So the question is, those who are running United Nations, don't you have kids? Mm. You have children, right? So, so why don't you put yourself, put your, your children in our shoes? And on that note, we're running a little short of time, but I, but I, I wanted to just say, um, to understand what it is uh, to be in your shoes, a great place to start, the books, the documentaries that you, that you cited. Um, uh, one final question. Um, how, do, how will Southern Sudan proceed in peace and prosperity? Um, and are you optimistic for the future? South Sudan have a good standing. Uh, at this point, it's a new country. Uh, it's a country with the resources right now. It's a country with uh, people have some attention. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you talk to somebody tolerate here in Colorado, I say, what is South Sudan? Maybe mm. some people will, will tell you. Mm. It has never happened before. Mm. A country deep in Africa, far away, mm. maybe uh, uh, even some people in the United States call Africa a country. Mm. Right now, it's, it's standing a good chance to, to survive and do better well. We have good leadership, and, uh, and I think South Sudan need help. Mm. It need help in many ways. You can't just say, okay, we help you, you become independent, and that's, you go. Mm. It's, like, uh, it's like you're giving birth to a child, and they say, okay, it's up to you whether you start to crawl or sit up or mm. walk. Mm. That's how it is. South Sudan is just like a little mm. kid. Mm. I mean, a baby born, mm. right? It's a, it's a 19 months old mm. now mm. country. So how would you do that? Mm. How would you say, okay, now you're independent, just go. What I'm asking is, mm. I'm not blaming anybody mm. here, but what I'm saying is, since we are all human beings and we are connected and we are a global, a community of, of a global, uh, it's a community of global leaders and global you know, societies and so on, mm. don't we have this ob ob obligation to help each other when mm. each other it cannot help him or herself, or itself, for example, mm. South Sudan, cannot help itself right now. Why can't we help? You cannot assume that they are leaders. Well, you mm -hmm. can be president. That the title of being president or prime minister or so on cannot do a work. So what I hear you saying is with that coordination, with that collaboration, that support, you're optimistic about the future. Very yeah. optimistic. South Sudan will be, uh, if, we, if we are given chance, mm -hmm. especially those who are, who are from United States, mm -hmm. from Australia, from Canada, from uh, outside the country, mm -hmm. If we are given chance, South Sudan is going to be a prosperous uh, nation, so there will be a put basket of the whole of Africa mm. because we have everything what it takes. We have mm. a lot of sun, mm. sunshine, we have a lot of rains, mm. rain from 
April until November, mm. we have oil, we have mm. all those minerals. Mm. South Sudan is, a, I'm, a, I'm very optimistic at this point, but I think we need more help so that we can get to that goal. Well, um, as they say in the South, God willing, as they say in the North, inshallah. Um, and I, I, I want to thank you very much, John Dow, for your time today. Apata uh, pay is, is that, is it, did I get it right? Yes, uh, yes, okay. yes. Uh, yeah, and um, and, uh, and, and I, I wish you the best of luck with your foundation. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. God bless.